My name is Barbara Lundblad, and uh, I am uh, a Lutheran pastor, ELCA, and I was ordained in 1980. I would say my Aunt Trudy, who uh, was never ordained, she's still living, she's 89, and um, she was very close to me growing up and um, a kind of mentor. She did a lot of church work. She was a, a lay professional woman in the church, and uh, I think years later she would have been ordained, but she's always been very encouraging to me, and I really looked up to her and at, really as a child and until this very moment it's still true. My life I would say that my call was something that did not let go of me so God just did not let go of me so before when I graduated from college women couldn't be ordained and I don't remember being angry about that it just was the way things were in the world and uh, so, uh, but I always have worked for the church. So while I was a youth director here in Bloomington, Minnesota, uh, I began to really feel a stirring that I want to at least explore. When I was doing youth work and, and education in churches, we were trying to really validate those kinds of ministries. And so I felt when I went off to seminary, I wasn't yet sure, and it felt a little bit like I was betraying all this work that we'd been doing to validate other kinds of ministries in the church. So it, I was sort of kicking and screaming in some ways, but uh, you know what I loved doing and what I felt really called to do was part of what it meant to be ordained. So I sort of put my kicking and screaming <laughs> aside for a while and. Uh, and I've been really honored to, to be a pastor in the church. There was a woman at Yale Divinity School, Joan Forsberg, who was uh, herself a minister in the United Church of Christ. In my memory, she's the first ordained woman that I saw preside at communion. I can see her in this very moment turning around to this whole group. We were all gathered around the table there and she said, come from the east and the west and the north and the south and eat at the table of God. I think just something shifted inside me. Oh, I think, I think things have definitely changed. Yeah. I mean, I remember Bishop Chilstrom, uh, when he was a bishop in Minnesota, uh, he said when he was first elected the bishop there, there were 500 pastors and one woman, one ordained woman. Now, as I look around Minnesota, where I live now, I mean, I know that's very, very different. And I also know that it has not changed that some women have a very difficult time. I mean, there may be men who have a difficult time, but not because they're men. Some women, I, I just had a woman at this conference say to me, some people, and she's been there in this congregation for a while, just said, you know, now we've heard that there are some people in the congregation who don't want a woman pastor. She's been there maybe six or seven years. So I don't think you hear the same kind of concern. There may be a man who can't preach well or doesn't, isn't a good counselor, but it's not because he's a man. With women, there, there are still people who would say, we just... We just don't want a woman. Or we, we've had one woman when we don't want another one. So, you know, I mean, they wouldn't say that about a man either. So that, that I think, uh, is still a, a barrier. But, boy, things have we really opened up for women. And we see this in terms of bishops and presidents of seminaries and colleges now, Lutheran colleges. So it is a different day. It's an exciting time. Yeah, it is. I would, I would first of all say that the text that's been really important to me is the Pentecost text. I mean, if we talk about that as the birthday of the church and the Spirit of God, I mean, Peter stands up in the square and is quoting the prophet Joel and says, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And that wasn't that we changed that text. That's how it was. Even on my servants, both male and female, I will pour out my spirit. Um, I mean, I just think 
to do anything other than that, to really believe that, is to deny the Spirit of God at work in the world. I mean, I, and I know that there are traditions that don't ordain women, but I don't think there is any credible reason why that should, should not be the case. If half of the whole human race is left out of preaching and presiding, I think people have the idea still that women are lesser creatures in some way, even if we don't say it. I mean, even if, even if the, po the Pope, you know, wonderful Pope right now, Pope Francis, I mean, he, he will not say that women are lesser creatures. I mean, but, but, there's always that but, and the but means that, you know, not really, not really able to represent Christ at the altar, if that's the kind of language we use. Um, so until that changes, I think the church itself will stay as a lesser church than, than Jesus calls us to be. I would like to be remembered as a teacher who helped others find their voice, not to copy my voice or somebody else's voice, but um, I have such a high regard for preaching as a way of reaching people and touching their lives and uh, and I hope that, um, I hope I've helped lay people in congregations really feel that too, that now they can claim this gift of the word for themselves. I've been part of a little clergy women's group in the Lutheran Church since 1983. And that has held me together. And if I could say anything to women clergy who might be listening to this, I would say find some community, a community of women that can really support you through difficult times. That's been life-giving, life-saving for me.